Ladies, as we turn the show over to girls basketball in North Jersey, more specifically to the Bergen County Girls Basketball Tournament, we got a big show for you tonight. I am Corey Doviak, being joined by my illustrious panel of local girls high school basketball experts, starting with our very own NorthJerseySports.com girls basketball insider, Richie Ballgame. Barton, what's up, Richie B? Not much. Second podcast of the night. I, I wish there were more. Yeah, I mean, really. Is there really. Any, maybe we'll do a middle school basketball show coming up next here. And uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll break it all down from the uh, OLM to everybody else. But we'll stick with high school girls basketball for now. And we welcome in Bergenfield head coach Mike Kilgallen. Mike, what's going on? What's up, guys? Thanks for having me. We're happy to have you with us, and we're going to talk more about the Bergen County Tournament with our other panelist as well. He is Paramus girls basketball coach Scott Papetti. What's up, Scotty P? What's up, fellas? Once again, the highlight of my season coming on the show. <laughs> yeah, it really is. It's the greatest time in everybody's life. It, it is. Really, Absolutely, it, it, 100%. NorthJerseySports.com, making dreams come true all over Bergen County. All right, so let's talk about the Bergen County Girls Basketball Tournament. I'm going to set this show up a little bit because we have two big guests tonight that will join us on the phone. One is Holy Angels head coach Sue Liddy, one of my favorite people to talk to. She is, well, not only great on the show, but she's also really a legend. Uh, you talk about Bergen County Girls Basketball, but even regionally and, and nationwide, uh, she's done it all, and she will join us a little bit later on to talk about their win over Demarest in the in the quarter uh, round of 16, and to talk about her quarterfinal matchup with top seeded IHA. We'll get to that, and we'll also get to Brian Dunn, the head coach of the Northern Valley Old Japan Girls basketball team. Uh, they got by Mawa relatively easily in the round of 16, and a big one coming up in the quarterfinals against Paramus Catholic, the 12 seed that knocked out number five Ramapo. So we will do all that. But uh, I want to go around the uh, round of 16 first. Just things that stuck out. We'll let the panelists have their say here. Mike Kilgallen, what did you see in the round of 16? Anything surprising or noteworthy uh, worth talking about here? Uh, the two things that really stood out, um, Paramus Catholic, you know, having that big second-half comeback against, you know, uh, one of the, the best teams in Bergen County, and and just how good Immaculate Conception is. Um, I think that those two things were, were really kind of glaring from the round of 16. Yes, absolutely. Richie B., thoughts? Well, obvious. Uh, well, my my two are actually uh, one, Old Japan, which we'll talk with Brian Dunn in a little bit. Uh, the fact, not that they won that game, but how they won that game. I mean, dominant from start to finish against a pretty good Mawa team. Uh, that's one. And two, Saddle River Day in that first half against Teaneck. They ended up winning by 10, but it was pretty comfortable the whole way. Uh, Saddle River Days, Danny McMahon was all over the place. Danny Duell was, uh, they just couldn't handle her inside. Uh, they, they looked really, really good. If they could put what they did in the first half, if they could put that together for 32 minutes, they could hang with anybody in the county. Richie B. and Saddle River Day, I'm glad you said it. Not only they're an advertiser on NorthJerseySports.com, they are your, your pick to win the tournament, and I think Danny Duell is your favorite player in North Jersey. <laughs> That, well, first, of all, well, first of all, what kind of what kind of a member do you have? First of all, they're your pick to win the tournament. I just haven't right, gone to the final four. <laughs> <laughs> the memory question I will leave out, uh, as I often mentioned, the '90s happened to my memory. <laughs> That's what happened there. Scotty P, how about you? I mean, you were down there all day at Ridgefield Park. You got to see all the action. Something we missed? Uh, no, I mean, look, the I was just like um, uh, Richie talked about. I was kind of surprised at how big of a jump all the pan uh came out on Mawa and kind of hit Mawa on the face and they really couldn't come back from it. You know Mawa had some decent looks early to stay in the game but I mean all the pan was quick on all cylinders and for them to put up 60 something points that's that's a lot for an all the pan team and that's you know pretty dangerous thing for the rest of the field and uh you know I was obviously very surprised at the second half round call had but we've all talked about you know Primus Catholic team at a 12 is really not uh, – it's a tough 12 seed. So, Primus Catholic kind of got it going and um, caught Rampo on a bad day. And then that last thing that Richie was talking about, I hadn't seen – I hadn't seen the Saturday day play, and I was utterly impressed in that, with that first half on how the, how well that they played all around. Defensively, they were swarming to the ball. Uh, Danny McMahon was all over the floor. Um, really, they had Teaneck 
completely baffled on what what they want what they were going to try and do on offense. And uh, yeah, I mean, if they play that well, they could really beat anyone in the tournament. All right. Well, Richie B, it is my uh, astute pleasure to welcome in on the Moe's Southwest Grill Hotline one of our all-time favorite guests here on the ball game. She is Holy Angels head coach Sue Liddy. Coach, where have you been? Where have I been? Uh, I don't know. Kind of behind the door, I guess, the last couple of years. Well, you were stuck on the shop right line. Which yeah, is that's where I was before. tonight. I was stuck in the shop right line. But you are back on the ball game, and that means that Holy Angels is back as well. A big win over uh, Demarest in the yes. round of 16 at the Bergen County tournament. You're into the quarterfinals. First of all, let's just go back to that Demarest game a little bit. Uh, you know, talk about it. I thought it was a big win for your kids. I mean, not a lot of experience in this tournament. And, uh, you know, to to get a win over a quality team was probably big for you. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, we kept talking all week. Like, we had to believe that we could do it. Um, they were not as tall as we were. And we knew that if we played solid defense, we had a chance. But you can't stop everybody on that team. I mean, there's so many kids that can score. You know, the Corcoran kids and uh, number 25, uh, Brittany out there. And um, it, it's it's difficult. So we picked and choose what we had to do. And I kind of put my best two players on, uh, defensive players anyway, on um, the uh, the big kid outside and uh, on the Corcoran kid that's on the outside. And I can't tell the difference between the two of them. So. Me neither. Thank <laughs> God for shoot. numbers on jerseys. In 13, for three 13 years. and 25, that's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> right. Go ahead, Richie. Uh, yeah, I mean, defensively, um, you know, you guys have been uh, great all year. Uh, I mean, you know, just holding teams to, you know, 30 to 35 points or even below that, pretty much in almost all of your games, is that – more of a scheme that the kids have really adapted to, or is that just uh, hard work in the off season, or just better communication? What's the difference between this year's team defensively and last year's team? Well, we had to go back and teach everything last year, and um, I I want to be fundamentally sound when you know I put a team on the floor, and we knew last year we were really young, and so we stressed and stressed and stressed. You know, defense, boxing out, being in the right place getting a stance, you know, all the stuff that you would teach young kids. And, um, you know, this year when we stepped on the floor, you could see what we did last year helped us this year. Our man-to-man had been a little bit down, but um, we played the last couple of games, we've been playing pretty good man-to-man inside and also on the wings. And, you know, I didn't realize how good it was until I went back to the scorebook, which I never get, you know, really look at um, the other day and saw that, and the kid outside there that's a three-point shooter, she only had three points. I mean, it's, she took some shots, but we never let her feet get set. And the other one on the outside, the Corcoran kid out there, she had, uh, I think she only had two. So, you know, that really helped us. But the kid underneath, uh, Giles, Giles, I think that's her name, she's kind of like the silent assassin. You know, when you work at the rest of them, and she just finds a way to be near the ball. But... We did a good enough job on those kids, and you know, and we did score enough points to win. That's that was the key. So yeah, what, what's the plan going into the game? It's to score one more point than the other team. That's, that's uh, correct. Always yeah, a successful yeah. strategy. Uh, uh, I, I'm curious. How, oh, go ahead, Rich. I, I was going to say, talk, go talking about scoring, you've gotten so much balance this year. I mean, even with the uh, you know going back to Taylor Wainer to beyond, you know, you usually had that one go-to player that when the game is on the line, you're saying, all right, here's the ball, go win this the game. Now with so many different scores on the floor, just talk about what a benefit that is, especially in close games, knowing that you could just run your offense and whoever's open is going to get the shot. Well, and that's true. That's very true. And this team is a very unselfish team. They'll pass the ball to anybody that's open. And sometimes that's to a fault, you know, also, because sometimes the wrong person is shooting at the wrong time. But with that said, we do have good balance. Uh, the only thing is now, you know, I got one kid that's really a forward that's playing out on a wing because Hunter went down and got hurt. And um, that took us out of what I think really could have been something, something, something terrific. You know, I'm not saying that we can't still do it, but, you know, you remove that one kid that's the point guard with senior leadership, it's very hard to, you know, rely on a, a pure freshman out there that's, <laughs> Just yeah. trying to run the point, and then Lauren Dine, 
is really a, a freshman at heart because she only played in seven games last year because she transferred in. So, you know, it's difficult at some times. I like the way Rich Barton asks you questions as if he's actually covered one of your games this year. I mean, he said, you know, he's so, he sounds so knowledgeable, but Richie B, you haven't even seen the Angels. I'll, I'll be seeing them in about uh, what, less than 48 hours. Yes, we're excited about it. All right, so the, and a perfect segue by you because you, now we move on to the quarterfinals here. And uh, do you know anything about the team that you might be playing there? <laughs> Immaculate Heart Academy. Do I know? We usually play them four or five times a year. Right. <laughs> They're just an outstanding team. They're they're tough in every single spot. They're big, and they bring they take their two bigs off the floor, and they bring two more bigs onto the floor. You know, so they're very very difficult to um, to defend, and they're very difficult to get into an offense on because they they really hound you out there in front. The only probably positive thing that I can say about Saturday is we're going to give it our best shot, like we always do. But a bigger floor might help us and give us a little bit of an advantage. So. Yeah, you can spread it out a little bit more and, yeah. and uh, try to create some angles. Right. How, how about – I'm curious how you – you know, listen, your resume, we could go over it. It is as impressive as any, not just in Bergen County or North Jersey, but any in the country as far as high school girls' hoops. How do you deal with a season that you had last year? You know, you did a lot of teaching. uh you, you a lot of basics, a lot of that stuff. You, whenever I talk to you, you always seem very—I don't know if happy-go-lucky is the term—but humble, and it seems like you enjoy the process of coaching as much as the winning of coaching. How did you deal with last year, and did it, you know, recharge the batteries in some ways because you you were a teacher as well as a coach? Uh, it did, and um, with my nephew as my assistant now, he brought in a lot of uh, enthusiasm and um, newer ideas to the program, which is great because, you know, yep. after a while you only have so much you can go on and you can get burnt out. So I was very fortunate that he was available and he's, he's going to be a very good coach at some point someday. And uh, he's helped me a lot, uh, as his father did <laughs> when he helped me back in the day. So. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, Sean Liddy. Well, I, I, I covered him in high school, so I'm old too. Yeah, yeah you're old too. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, yep. you got another one? Uh, I totally forgot what I was going to say. Um, <laughs> not the first time that's ever happened here on the ball game. Uh, yeah, no, no, not the first, not the last either. Um, just talk about overall, really, the, you know, IHA is the overwhelming favorite uh, in this tournament, but there's so, like the depth, just talk about the depth that is growing within Burton County that pretty much any team in the quarterfinals you know, can beat any other team on any given night. And that wasn't really the case, say, 10 years ago. Uh, you're absolutely right. And that's why you play the game. <laughs> because you just never know what's going to happen. Uh, we could have a great shooting night. They could have a poor one. I mean, it, it's it's just what it is. And, you know, every time we play them, it seems like we get better as we play them. <laughs> I guess we figure it out. But last yeah. year was the same way. I mean, we, we had a very poor first game. We got really um, you know, beat pretty badly. In the second game, I think we only lost by 15. And then the last game in the States, we should have won that game. We had the game, and we lost by one. So, you know, we got better as the season went on, which is exactly what you're supposed to do. You're not supposed to be right there at the beginning because you have nowhere to go. You're going to be plateauing, or you're going to, have to take a step down, and everybody else is going to take a step past you. But with what IHA's got, they're just very good. <laughs> they're just very good. But, yeah, but as I said, I you never so, know. Yeah, but I think, too, like what Rich was trying to say, I think if you take IHA out of the, you know, if there were just seven teams left here, I don't oh, know if oh, they'd exactly. be in favor okay. to win. You know? I, no, yeah. your point is well taken. Yeah. But, uh, you know, from from uh, that perspective, if you minus IHA out of here, who's the favorite of the seven teams remaining? Oh, it, anybody can beat anybody this year. Anybody. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and even with uh, with that set PC could be up there. Who knows? Yep. You know. Yep. So. Yeah, we had a, we had Al Roth on earlier in the year, and he, you know, he I think what was he, Richie, seven and six going into the tournament, and yep. uh, 
You know, he was the, down there in the group of death with Old Pan, Ramapo, and Paramus Catholic, and you know, one of those only one of them can advance. And whoever gets out of that bracket, coach, is certainly going to earn their spot in the Final Four. Oh, absolutely. That's why there's so much parity this year that anybody, you're right, anybody can knock anybody all off, and they all, everybody has to be ready to play. Yeah. Has to be ready to play. Do you ever get tired of? It's always. And it has been since we've had the site in 2000. It's IHA, Holy Angels, in, you know, usually in a county, always for the league, always for a state section. Do you wish you could, uh, you know, throw some new blood in there and maybe, you know, if a, if a realignment ever happened, not that it would uh, with you two being separated, but – or do you like the fact that, you know, it's head-to-head every year and best team's going to win and, and win uh, hardware along with the games that they do win? Um, that's true, and as you said, they're never going to change the cap schools <laughs> out of any right. other league because no. right now they don't want us in any league. So, um, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but uh, you know, it's, it's difficult to say. But you know, you're right. Um, sometimes it does get very disheartening for other teams because you're always getting beat up by yeah. you know, especially the IHA. And um, but you know what? It makes you better in the long run. And if you can see the improvement over the course of time, like last year. Yeah. When they didn't shoot well in that game, and we shot well in that game, and we were right in the ball game with them, you know, it makes the kids feel like, oh, really, something we did right for a change, and we came to full potential last year, you know. So hopefully, the following year when they step on the floor, they have that confidence going in, and I think that can happen. Helped us a little bit this year too. Yeah, you're playing for the Pariah League Championship. Yeah. <laughs> Richie, you got another one, or you want me to follow? Up? I was going to say, what specific, what specifically about that game in the states against IHA last year do you think that this team carried in to to you know this weekend's game and really this season as a whole? I'm sure she hasn't even thought about once thought about it once since it happened, right, Coach? <laughs> oh my gosh. I saw the shots and I was like, "Oh, they're limping out now." <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen, but um, I think just what they brought into this year. I think that they they felt relaxed last year when they went on that court because we kept saying to them, "Look, they're the better team. We're not supposed to win, but if you make this game bigger than it should be, it's the result's going to be the same." So you have to go in and play relaxed and just play the game for the game. And I think once that happened and they saw that they were there and then they were there and then they were there and they were gone and they, and they gained confidence each, you know, quarter of that game. It, it, it was really something fun to watch. Well, I've seen you do it a million times. Your teams, even if you have uh, one of the better teams, uh, one of your better teams, they get better from beginning of the year to the end you're do you did it last year you're doing it again this year so uh and, and listen we're glad to have you back on the ball game coach we're well I'm, gl- excited. I'm glad to be here our our uh t-shirt said you know it's not where you start it's where you finish and that that's, that's pretty much what it is you know yes and you usually finish right there at the top so we wish you the best of luck this weekend and we'll put our best guy on your game richie ball game going to join you for the quarterfinal round against IHA, and uh, I'm sure you will have some good quotes after the game, win or lose. I, I would like to think so. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, take, maybe, maybe write it down. You know, I may, I may have to go back in my uh, <laughs> in my file to pick them out, but <laughs> I'll try. No, no quote will ever be remembered more fondly than a couple years ago. We had we had you on, and I said, Coach, what are you doing? You said, I'm watching the I Love Lucy marathon. So <laughs> yeah, it. because it was snowing <laughs> out. <laughs> we laugh about that all the time. It was great, and it was great having you here again tonight. Uh, glad to catch up. Good luck, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Well, it is my distinct pleasure to welcome in on the Moe's Southwest Grill hotline, uh, a man whose team is moving on to the quarterfinals of the Bergen County Women's Basketball Tournament, and also a guy who is very easy to beat in basement poker games. He is Northern Valley Old Japan head coach Brian Dunn. Coach, thanks for joining us here on the ball game. Anytime, anytime. So, hey, listen, it had to be a dream start for you in the round of 16. Mawa's a good team. We've been talking about them uh, often this year as a very dangerous opponent, and you get out 14 nothing. I mean, you can't uh, diagram a better way to start a county tournament game. Um, yeah, we had a good start and a good, good, uh, 
good defensive pressure early on in the game and uh, forced him to turn the ball over a couple times. Got a couple easy ones right at the start of the game and um, just kept it, kept it, uh, kept the pedal to the metal from there. So uh, you know, kids, kids did a real good job at the start to get things going. Yeah, I mean, how important is it too? Because Mawa is a team looking to come in and pull an upset and to you know take that early stance and make yeah. them play from behind. They had, you know, they had they had a, a nice diverse team. A couple real good shooters from the outside. A, a point guard who's playing very well all year long, and uh, did, did a good job running their team. And a good post, good young post kid. And um, so I had uh, so we had some concerns coming in, no doubt about it. I thought they're playing very well, but uh, I, I think our kids did just what they've been doing all year, just uh, playing high pressure defense and rebounding the ball real well and. Uh, cutting people down in one shot and out, and, and uh, we just kind of stuck to our game plan. Go ahead, Richie B. Uh, you know, I want to talk, obviously, about the upcoming matchup with Paramus Catholic. Uh, Paramus Catholic, one of your three losses, but then again, that was a month ago. You're a much different team now in, in different ways, too, uh, because George, you know, really started to emerge before she went down with the injury and also playing with a lot more confidence now. Uh Talk about the difference between your team a month ago and now, uh, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Well, I mean, our our teams, the kids we've got right now, we've got a, a group of kids, basically the identical team we had last year. So I don't know that our teams, that our teams changed all that much except for the fact that I think we, we were just constantly making good improvements during during the course of the year. We're getting more contributions on the offensive end from from – a variety of kids seems like on every any given night a different kid stepping up and knocking down a couple big baskets and and um, so I uh, you know with losing Alex is a is a a big big hit for us in terms of and some size athleticism and uh, you know a big post kid inside and she was coming along very well but uh, we we played a you know we played a whole season without her last year and and uh, you know we're just kind of trying to pick up the pieces there and everybody just contribute a little bit more. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, that, Mike. Uh, yeah, the Tad Ulta fan team is good. I mean, we have the pleasure of uh, seeing them tomorrow afternoon, but they <laughs> they just bring a toughness that, I don't know, we, we, I think our league is pretty good, but we just don't see that level of toughness in every single team. Uh, every single kid um, they're just so fundamental in terms of their physicality and, and rebounding. And, I mean, they do all of the little things that, that great teams do. And I, I don't know. I, I, I like their chances this weekend. I, I really do. I think. Um, Brian, I, Brian I aren't think, you glad I brought Mike on? It was just to pump you up. I mean, yeah, I thought you were sandbagging you're... me when you said Mike's on here, man. Come on. <laughs> I'm trying to get my head before tomorrow. I don't know. Man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you happen to look past tomorrow's game, so be it. Yeah. Well, that, that's my hope. My hope is that the focus is on that. He put it all up. You know, they're so good. We got no shot. We'll just come in with our team and, you know, try to make a three and see what happens. Yeah. All right, Mike, did you have a question in there? Or uh, um, did, did you just want to lay praise at the feet of the great Brian Dunn? No, that, I, I'm just wondering, uh, yeah, how do uh, – how do you how do you deal with that team and Grant? I mean, with with her back, I mean they're they're a good team. They're rolling. Uh, they took a tough loss yesterday, but um, yeah, I'm just wondering how how to slow them down inside. Uh, and I don't know. I mean, it, it's uh, their team side. I mean, they have great sides inside. The, the inside presence obviously is a is a game changer for for you, you know my teams like us and you guys and whatever. We, we'll go out and compete hard and and. Uh, Try and try and hope they have an off night and do the best we can in terms of like uh, positioning and just quickness. I mean, they're they're tough. They're a very good team and uh, well balanced. Guards are playing very well. I think that's a big difference for them in the last couple couple games as their guards have really stepped up. They've always had the big inside presence. So so uh, we'll just try and control them on the glass as best we can. You know, I I I mean, we'll go out and match up with 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 them and whatever. And they have. Great kids, but I, I love my kids, and I, I, you know, I wouldn't trade them for any of those kids or any other kids, really. I mean, I just like the way we're playing, and we'll, we'll throw it out there and see what happens. You hear that, Mike? He doesn't want any of your kids. 
Uh, I love, I'm a little bit. He's got. It's already up on too. the bulletin board. That's my bulletin board. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Free game Big talk tomorrow. The Burger Field locker room. Dunn doesn't want the Burger Field. Now <laughs> your point is your point is well taken, though, Bry. And you know the one thing that is in your favor, and this is another topic that we've talked about a lot here. But you have played about as tough a schedule as any public school in North Jersey can. I mean, you you know you've you've been in every uh, every gym on the road, neutral sites, everything. I mean, that's, it's not an advantage you can touch, but your kids, I don't think, are going to be overwhelmed by the situation. No, I mean, we played them before, and we played them tough, and we, you know, I don't think collectively, we didn't we didn't think we, any of us played, very, you know, I know our kids thought they played real well in that game, and we played a tough schedule and done fairly well. I mean, that's, honestly, that's no different than any other year, so this year we've won a, a couple more games in, in, in some of those tight ones. So we'll, we'll head in with the same mindset. We're just going to try and do what we do well and and, uh, and and limit them from opportunities. I mean, like I said, I, I just like the way our kids are, are practicing right now. Not so much the games or whatever. The games are games, and you roll it out there and play. But uh, I like the way our kids work. And, and uh, you know, at, at the end of it, you know, we're going to show up and play hard. I know that. So 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 we'll see how it shakes out. Yeah, Richie, you got another one? Uh, yeah, is it different to prepare for Paramus Catlin because most of the teams you play, while talented, are a little more methodical. Paramus Catholic, you, you know, likes to get up now. They're going to crash the glass. They're going to try to make you play a little bit more of a helter skelter. So, um, talk about how it is to prepare for them and how much different it is in comparison to, to other teams you play. Well, I mean, there's. The problem with preparing for them is that you can't really simulate that type of practice type, you know, uh, atmosphere. And Michael talked to this. I mean, there's certain teams you just can't replicate from your, from your, uh, practice type, uh, you, you know, arrangement and get that kind of look. So, but that, that's, that goes back to the schedule we played and just kind of, uh, hopefully we've, we've, uh, presented those situations and games we played already. And, and, uh, so the preparation part of it is just kind of like, uh, you know, uh, falling back on the kids' experience and our team's experience and kind of uh, uh, envisioning those types of matchups and situations and creating them as best we can in, in one day of practice, really, and uh, and, and, and step out and, and, and tip it up and see where it goes. But the, you're, you're right about the rebounding and the crash in the glass and, and uh, that type of tempo and and, uh, and, and aggressiveness. That's, that's the key that you got to try and neutralize. You know, Bright, just uh, on, on the tournament as a whole, you know, we had Sue Liddy on earlier in the show when we were talking about it. If you took IHA out, I mean, they're the obvious favorite and the obvious number one, you know, seed, the favorite to win the whole tournament. The other seven teams, I think you can make a case for all of them. I mean, can you remember a year where there were, you know, this many teams uh, on the same level as there are this year? Over the years, I mean, I think – you know, when I was looking at it a couple of weeks ago, whatever, when trying to figure out who's going to be seated, I mean, over the years, you always said, like, all right, these three teams you would group together, and the next four teams would be in this group, and then you've got a group of five teams maybe that you could make a case for in either spot. But I think you're right. Like, after number one, it's kind of like, you know, you, you could maybe talk about four or five teams in the next group, and then the next group another five or six. I mean, it's hard to differentiate between them so and plus i think this year more than any other teams have been trending upwards towards the tournament time, yeah. you know pl- playing better uh as tournament time came around holy angels certainly one of those teams that uh, we played earlier in the year and, and i think they're a much different team much better team now so yeah so there's yeah. a lot of teams that could could do it but yeah i mean obviously the number one spot's a, a tough match right there and mike you, you were down in the group of the last three i believe uh, what's that I'm saying? I said you were down in the you know, of all those groups. You were in the in the last three. I think. Oh, we're down, down at the bottom. I think that's an honor <laughs> for us to be considered there. I think we're in the like the the, the eighth or ninth group. <laughs> yeah. Well, let, no, just, uh, listen, I'm going to tell you about that, and that's that's just the format of the tournament. Now that, that, that this tournament changed years back, and everybody says like, well, you know, like, uh, well, you make it to 32 teams, and everybody over 500 gets in, and whatever. 
it's still obviously not the best 32 teams all the time that get in. Like, and right. the Bergen Field's a perfect example, and there are other teams that. And we a couple of years ago we were five and nine, and we got in, and we got like a 15 or 16 seed, and right. and probably we're a little bit better than that in terms of like the seeding. But you, you know, you're lucky to get in at that point. The whole the whole deal with the, when the Pig North shuffled around, and now people are playing Catholic schools or whatever, and you got to play a couple, and the way your schedule shakes out, I mean. A look at our division. I mean, in our division, Mike, what was it? Uh, I mean, I guess we had four teams in the top eleven. You know, yeah. so so. I mean, if you got to play each of those teams uh, before the cutoff, plus you play in a challenging Christmas tournament, and then you get matched up with a Catholic school before the cutoff. I mean, how many wins are you realistically going to get? And you could have a real good team. You know, you could be the fifth best team in the county. You know, and still have a fairly five hundred. So it's uh you know, the the Big North kind of changed all that years ago, so we're fortunate that they take 32 teams, but in my case, it didn't, didn't pan out like the way it should have, you know? And, uh, you know, if he if he had been in the tournament at the beginning, you get a be- he'd get a much better seed, you know? And still, there he goes, and he takes, you know, Immaculate Conception down to, what was it, a three-point game? And, yeah. And, and yeah. that's and the that's team who seeded, what, 29th? I mean, so... so I mean, I, Yeah, so there, that goes to the... Uh, the strength of the schedule just in our division there and what he's done. I mean, Mike's done a great job with the kids he's got back this year. And I think, you know, in our division there, we have a tough grind every game. Mike, aren't you glad he brought that up again? Yeah. <laughs> I, was just to, I was just getting over it a little bit. Now I'm all fired up again. <laughs> right. Brian Dunn, the Northern Valley Old Tapan head coach, taking his team into the Bergen County quarterfinals this weekend against Paramus Catholic a tough opponent. Thank you for joining us here. And I didn't really mean to sandbag. You know, I don't check the schedule that far in advance, meaning tomorrow. I didn't even realize you were playing. Yeah, you know, we're tomorrow. playing. Yeah, yeah. Back so, around uh, round two in the uh, division there, so we're back through it again. Yeah, all right. So, uh, you know, whatever. I think you did a good job of keeping your cards close to the vest because, <laughs> as we know, Kilgallen doesn't go out and do much scouting, so he doesn't yeah. even know what, what, what <laughs> right. color you wear, let alone what offense you run. Yeah, I know just about <laughs> as much about those kids. Uh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was a joke. That was a joke. If Tom Curry is listening, that was a joke. Mike Kilgallen, very big on the scouting. <laughs> Brian Dunn, thanks for joining us here on the ball game. We'll see you this weekend. I'll put my best man on it. Sounds good. Well, interesting stuff there with both Sue Liddy and with Brian Dunn. They're two teams playing as well as any except – IHA. I mean, that is the elephant in the room. You know, we're going to let's break down these quarterfinals a little bit. And as I mentioned to both of those coaches, I think, uh, you know, the the other seven teams all could knock each other off. It's going to be interesting to see if anybody can do it to IHA. Holy Angels obviously gets the first shot at it. But Richie B, uh, what do you most look You're going to be our girls basketball uh, aficionado this weekend. You're going to get down there for the quarterfinal round what do you which one are you most looking forward to or storyline you know give us uh what you're thinking about looking at saturday the the one i'm most looking forward to is actually immaculate conception of westwood um you know you got you got two teams with two bigs and it's gonna it's gonna come you know as talented as all four of them are you know fearing and jasmine g and uh you know heinz clark and mccletchy for westwood it's going gonna, it's gonna to come down to who can hit perimeter shots and who could really take care of the ball. Um, you know, both teams have capable guards, but not guards that can take over a game or at least haven't taken over a big game yet. Someone's going to have to step up and be that third score. Whoever can do that for either team is like a good come out victorious. Yeah, Mike, you, you play Old Japan tomorrow as we tape this. They're going to get the big one against Paramus Catholic. Obviously, we talked about it with Brian, but was there anything that wasn't said in there that you think is going to be a key to that game? I, I think it was all pretty well said. Uh, it all starts and ends with, uh, you know, Emily Cravani. Uh, she's, you know, the press break, single-handedly a press breaker herself. So I don't think any kind of pressure is going to bother Old Japan. Um, and I just think the way that they can lock teams down defensively will be the difference. Uh, that's a really, really good basketball team. Yeah, I agree with you. And, and defense, you know, defense in a tournament setting. You know, offense comes and goes. Defense, you can play it for all 32. And you know Brian's going to have his team playing it. No doubt about it. Scotty, how about you? Uh, I mean, I, I let's, let me ask you about IHA. I don't know if you've seen them. 
we had Sue Liddy on the show earlier, and if anybody can, you know, come up with a game plan to, you know, slow down the IHA, Sue Liddy can do it. She's done it a hundred times in the past, but it, the talent gap is is wide. Yeah, I mean, I haven't seen IHA this year. I saw obviously some of last year, but knowing what obviously Sue can do and the 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 kids that she has and the talent that she has coming in, the freshmen and sophomores, obviously those kids are not necessarily as battle tested as, you know, some of the seniors that IHA has, but you know what? I'm sure you know that Sue's gonna get them prepared and you know, the the I would say that the environment's not gonna really um bother them too much as opposed to maybe some of the other schools that maybe not wouldn't be, you know, used to being in this type of situation. So um even though she's got some young kids, I'm sure that they're gonna give IHA some fits. But I just think that IHA's depth and their uh, their experience is just going to weigh too much in the end. Yeah, and the other game is Saddle River Day against Northern Highlands. How about you, Scotty? Do you see a way through for Saddle River Day? I mean, we've talked about them extensively. Highlands, the defending champion, you know, kind of a, a under the radar defending champion. Yeah, I mean, the number two seed. We just played them last night. Um, we played them twice this year. I've seen them a couple times. You know, they just do things so well, <clears throat> excuse me, they run the floor. I mean, they're so long. They're so long. Besides the girl, Jubel, every other girl on the floor is almost six foot and so athletic. I think their athleticism is going to um, be the difference in this game. You know, Teenex big weren't, as athletic, weren't that athletic. It has athletic as, you know, some of the girls from, from Saddle of the Day. And, and the big girl from Saddle of the Day, very good. Um, but I think the, the length and, and the speed that, that Northern Highlands is going to possess is going to really give them fits because they just get it and go. I mean, they run a break similar to those North Carolina teams like five, six years ago. They fall and touch the floor. And, and you yeah. go again up and down the floor, and it's a layup. You know, if you're not out there and getting back on it, it's a, it's a layup. It'll have to layup. So um, I think their athleticism and their speed is going to uh, – take over because there's not a girl on the floor that's that going to slow them down. Richie B., what am I missing here about the quarterfinals? Um, I don't know if you're missing anything. Going back to that game, though, I think the key the key for Saddle River Day is going to be Kayla Oje. Um, against uh, against Teaneck, she played you know what Danny Brown, head coach Danny Brown called her best game in two years, which Having seen her a handful of times, I would totally agree. She played with confidence. She was, she was aggressive, and she gave him that second presence inside to take the pressure off of Danny Dole. And she's going to need to have another performance like that because with Highlands, whether it's Tori Reich or Emily Bonifacic or, uh, you know, uh, what's the other girl, Lava Solo, yep. you know, they always have that, you know, that second or third scoring option inside, and they generally come through, Saddle River Day is going to need to match that. All right, so I'm going to go around the room here. If you, ha- I'm not saying that – yeah, I'm not going to hold you to it because I'm putting you on the spot here. I'll start with you, Mike Kilgallen. If you had to pick one upset, one lower-seeded team to win, which one would it be? It would probably be Saddle River Day. Um, All right. Yeah, they're they're playing really well, um, battle tested, and uh, I mean, as it's Highlands, of course, too. But but I I think that they have an opportunity to uh, pull the upset this weekend. Richie B. Now you see, now, hmm. I, I'm torn between. Right. I I think both the Mackey <laughs> Conception and Westwood games and the Saddle River Day Northern Highland games are both going to be close. But I'm gonna, I'm going to stick to my guns here. I'm going to see Saddle River Day too. All right, Scotty P. Um. I'm going to go with the Westwood back of the Conception game. I think Westwood has a shot. I can't go against Highlands. They're in my league. Players, you know, I got to pull for them. I got to always but listen. Having a, a county champ That's in our cute. league is yeah. <laughs> <laughs> listen. Don't start. All right, we stick together. We stick together in our league. All right. So you're taking Westwood because you never play them. Is that correct? And you don't want to offend. Yes. And no, listen. And. uh and I and I play. I've coached against Charlie in baseball, so I'm uh, I'm pulling for Westwood. That's my that's my All upset right. special. All right, I will pick my upset special, and because I am never right, I'll just take Holy Angels and keep my streak going there. Follow the leader.